and off we go. So hello, I'm Angela, I'm one of the vets at the George. Um, I've been at the George for about four, well, nearly five years now. Um, I'm an advanced veterinary practitioner, practitioner, sorry, and have a certificate in equine internal medicine. So what is equine asthma? What are the clinical signs? How do we diagnose it? And how do we treat it? And then more importantly, the long-term management of the things we're going to go over this evening. So what is equine asthma? Essentially, it's a new name for an age-old problem. Um, it's previously known as inflammatory airway disease or PEDS, recurrent airway obstruction or COPD, but it's now been sort of reclassified as mild, moderate or severe asthma. So it's characterized by lower airway inflammation. It is non-infectious and it is caused by microscopic allergens. Um, so it's on a sort of sliding scale from mild to severe with the previously known inflammatory airway disease at the milder end of the scale, going up to your um, RAO at the more severe end of the scale. Now there's a whole spectrum disease in the middle. And just because you've had inflammatory airway disease does not necessarily mean that you will go on to get recurrent airway obstruction in later life. So mild to moderate disease was previously known as inflammatory airway disease, um, generally found in younger horses. Um, and it can have really subtle clinical signs, so an occasional cough, reduced performance, normal respiratory effort at rest, but um, it's often a slightly increased um, recovery time post-exercise, but you know, very, very mild clinical signs indeed. Going up to your moderate to severe um, equine asthma, which was previously known as recurrent airway obstruction, um, generally found in older horses, so older than seven years old. Um, they have a persistent cough, reduced performance, uh, a noted um, an increased respiratory effort, so um, with an abdominal effort, um, and that's because of the reduced airway diameter and increased resistance within the airways. It's chronic, so it'll be going on for longer than a month, and severe cases can really struggle to breathe. How do we diagnose equine asthma? So a lot of it's on clinical history, so a history of a, a sort of an older horse that has been stabled over the winter, with you know bedding on a straw bed with a cough um, would make you suspicious. Um, then we would take a, um, undertake a clinical examination and would listen to the lung sounds and the tracheal sounds. Um, sometimes we'd have a look at them post-exercise, so they'd be breathing more deeply, or occasionally we'd use something called a rebreathing bag um, to encourage the horse to breathe more deeply so we can hear um, we get we get to listen more clearly to the to the airway sounds. Um, and then further investigation would include um, endoscopy, so a scope, um, a bronchoalveolar lavage, where we pass the tube blindly down into the lower airways. Um, we then look at those um, samples that we take um, under the microscope, which is cytology, and then culture them to double check there's no um, bacterial components. So endoscopy, this is where we pass a scope up the horse's nose through the trachea. We grade the mucus from zero to four, with zero being normal and four being very, very mucusy. Um, we examine what we call the carina, which is the um, bifurcation of the um, of the trachea into the major bronchi, so into each lung. When it's very inflamed or it's been chronically inflamed, often that will be blunted into sort of a snout rather than um, a lovely sharp fin, as it would be usually. Um, and we take a trachea wash for culture. Now I've got a little video of this and hopefully it will work. Um, I'll just fast forward to the most interesting bit. Hopefully it will work. Yes, it's working. So we're just probably being coughed at, I think, at the moment. Let's see if I can fast forward a little. We're just at the point of the larynx, you can see. If I'll clear my screen. So that's our larynx with the epiglottis, sort of like a tongue sticking forwards and two um, arytenoid cartilages at the top, sort of opening like curtain. Come back a little bit, down through the glottis. And we're just traveling down the trachea. You can see some small sort of globules of mucus there. So probably, I wouldn't put this in the sort of um, severe asthma, um, but there's definitely some mucus to be seen. So it wouldn't be zero, but really in the mild to moderate. So your, your ones and twos. So we're carrying on down here. 
can see some nice parsley drinks. It doesn't look particularly in flames. It doesn't look very red. I'm just poking out um, a catheter um, and we're going to put in some, um, some sterile fluid and then we're going to look at it at the, at the base of the trachea, so where you have a little, a little bend, it sort of um, accumulates at the thoracic inlet. And we'll try and retrieve that sample. This is our tracheal wash. There goes my fluid. I'm just going to go have a little look for our puddle. Just going down further into the trachea. You see me bending my head <laughs> slightly on the wonk. Um, and out will come my catheter. And we're just going to try and retrieve as much of that sample as we can. Perfect. So um, the other sampling method that we use is called a bronchoalveolar lavage, and we pass a tube blindly this time um, down through the um, upper airway, so through the um, larynx and pharynx and down the trachea. We trickle um, local anaesthetic as we go, um, because often the horses will cough when we, um, when we do a, a BAL. So we'll pass it all the way down to the lower airways until we get a really good seal. So you can sort of feel the tube bouncing when you can't go any further. We'll insert a small sort of balloon cuff um, to, to make a nice seal and we'll put in sort of 250 mils of fluid and get a really nice wash back. Um, so we know it's in the right place and we know we've got a good wash and there's a lovely frothy um, bubbly surface on the sample um, and then we will send it off for analysis. So um, the samples are spun down and then um, smeared onto a slide and stained. And we'll, we'll then culture some of the um, some of the sample too. And we look at it under the microscope. So this slide is a fairly typical looking slide. Well, it's typical, but there's some pathology there. So the light gold color um, is old blood that we can see called hemosiderin. And this is a this race this is a racehorse that had um, had bled during work. So um, quite an interesting slide. So we analyze, we look at 100 representative set, um, cells on the slide and look at the types of cells and the number of them that are present. So on the left, we've got a macrophage, which is a normal sort of housekeeping inflammatory cell. Um, the second over to the right is a, um, a lymphocyte, then with a nice big purple nucleus and then a slightly smaller, um, lighter purple around it. Just to the right of that, we have um, an epithelial cell, which you get if you get a... Um, if the horse coughs quite a lot when you're taking your track wash, it's an artifact from the um, upper respiratory tract of the mouth even, um, and it's got a nice hairy bottom to it. Um, and then right on the right hand side is an uh, eosinophil, which is nice and pink and bubbly. But the ones we're really interested in counting are the neutrophils, which have this really sort of knobbly, bobbly um, nucleus and dark purple nucleus and a little bit of cytoplasm, and they are indicative of inflammation. More than 5% neutrophils in a BAL would be considered abnormal in an, in an elite athlete, so that's enough to compromise performance. In your normal sort of everyday happy hacker or sort of low-level performance course, would tolerate up to sort of 10%. So how do we treat equine asthma? So um, we use anti-inflammatory so steroids and bronchodilators in severe cases. Um, and there's lots of different routes of administration for steroids. You've got your injectables, so they're very, very potent. You can give them IV, so the vet can give them very easily. But if you give them repeatedly for long periods of time, um, they do have systemic side effects. And uh, you, know, you can, in, in certain horses, induce um, laminitis. Oral prednisolone would be um, a, a bit safer. So the pros are it's quite potent, but not as potent as your injectable um, dexamethasone. Um, it's easy to administer, you can pop it in their feed, but again, the cons would, you would have some systemic side effects, um, but they'd be less likely to induce laminitis than your injectable friends. Um, inhaled steroids, so there's lots of different types of inhaled steroids. We've, um, we've often historically used the human meter dose inhalers, which are the um, sort of browny colored, purpley pinky one on the right hand side and your, um, and your blue um, clenyl um, inhalers. 
So um, we used to use them with a, a pediatric volumetric spacer and pop them over the um, pop them over the nose of the horse and, and try and get them to breathe in and out. Um, we use nebulizers and the new one on the market is called an, an equihaler, which is um, specifically designed for horses. So um, human inhalers are not licensed in horses. We use them with a pediatric spacer. They can be tricky to administer. So um, it's quite a lot to puff, keep the pediatric um, inhaler over their nose in the right place. Um, this, it, it's been shown to have some systemic absorption. Um, so it, it, um, it isn't as specific as we would perhaps like it to be. Um, and also the medication doesn't always penetrate as deeply as it's required. So it's got quite a large molecule size, which has been shown to not penetrate right to the lower airways in some horses. So um, a nebulizer, it vaporizes dexamethasone or saline. So you can use a much, much smaller dose of dex than you would do um, if you were to give it IV. So for example, maybe two or three mils versus sort of 20 mils in the vein. Um, again, it will have systemic absorption, but because it's such a small dose, it's less, um, it's less of an issue. Um, the nebulizer itself is quite expensive to buy, but it's yours forever. So it sort of swims in roundabouts a little bit. Um, and once they're trained, it's quite, it's quite well tolerated. And the new um, drug on the market is the Acervo Equihaler. So this is a soft mist of ciclesonide, which is a pro-drug. Um, so pro-drug means it's converted into the active form of, its, um, of the drug in the airway and only in the airway. So um, it's 12 times more potent than dexamethasone, which is the mo most potent drug we had previously available. Um, and the soft mist particles are designed to penetrate right to the lower airway. So they've specifically chosen that size um, so that they go as far as they possibly can. And the inhaler itself is specifically designed for horses. Um, and so it slots into their nostril and they seem to tolerate it quite well with a, you know, with a bit of encouragement, a bit of training. And there's some videos that we can send you if you're interested. Um, but the biggest point is there's no systemic absorption because it is a pro-drug. It's only converted into its active form in the lungs. So there's no risk of, of, of laminitis in, um, in susceptible horses. Um, I've said here it's not FEI legal, but apparently it's not fully banned now, but it's on the controlled list, so there'll be a withdrawal time um, as opposed to it being completely not allowed. So how else do we manage um, equine asthma? Um, and what we do know is it will not resolve fully with medication alone. Um, you have to reduce the trigger. So small particles of organic matter, um, so stable dust, your hay dust. Um, some horses are unfortunate enough to be um, allergic to pollens. Um, and so clean wet airway management is the best, the best way forward once you've got your asthma under control so with a steroid. So we want well ventilated stables free of cobwebs, which can um, hold on to dust quite well. Um, stable away from the muck heap where you might get moulds. Um, steam or soak hay. So hay must be soaked for at least a few hours in order to, um, to dampen down any of those small aerosolized particles and um, steaming removes, um, removes mold spores. So, and using a small amount of bedding that you can get away with with rubber mats instead of having lots and lots of bedding. Um, and the bedding should be a dust free option and not straw, which is much, um, much more prone to having small particles in it. Now, some pasture associated equine asthma is a bit of a pain to control because they're allergic to um, to plant pollens. Now trying to work out which plant pollen they're allergic to um, can be quite tricky. And some horses will be allergic to both pollens and stable allergens. So they'll be sort of atopic. Um, and, and controlling those can be very, very difficult um, because you want them in at certain times and out at certain times and it can be a bit of a bother. So they might need longer term steroid management. So the take home message is, um, really minimising exposure to dust will reduce your risk of developing severe asthma. Um, but if you are unlucky enough to develop um, asthma on any scale, then we can manage it um, carefully with medication and advise you on management. So I'm going to stop recording now. Are there any questions? <laughs>